Well, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For this week's video, I want to do something a little different. Those of you who have been watching my channel for some time will know that I am very much a late steam era enthusiast. But this week, I'm going to construct a couple of much more modern freight car loads, namely concrete ties, both in a gondola and on a bulkhead flat car. Now, I thought about this kind of load a while ago, and my first thoughts were that it would probably be easy just to strip the ties from a length of flex track. Well, that turned out to be a lot more problematic. Firstly, the webs between the ties need to be removed, and it's difficult to hold the tie while cleaning them up because they're just so small. And also, every brand of flex track I looked at had great big holes underneath the rails, and those have either got to be filled or covered. And then I came up with the idea of just prepping a few ties and making a silicon rubber mold. And I think I saved a lot of time that way. And for those of you interested in duplicating these loads, I'm going to make those molds available on my website, superiormodelrailroads.com. I'll put a link in the description below. So anyway, without further ado, let's just head over to my workbench and make some loads. Here we have two loads of concrete ties both for a gondola and a bulkhead flat. Let's now take a step back in time and show you exactly how I made them. Don't go away. Well, here are the two freight cars that I'm using for this project. One is a rail gone by Arrowhead and the other one is a bulkhead flat by Exact Rail. They're actually not my own freight cars my long time viewers probably know me by now that I prefer an earlier era for my railroad. But I have one of my overseas customers who has been stockpiling freight cars in my basement. These belong to him and I'm sure he won't mind getting a couple of free loads for them. For the bulkhead load I need enough ties to go at least four times the length of it. Between bulkheads it is about eight and a half inches. So I need 34 inches of tie load to get four layers. I don't actually know how many layers would be loaded onto a car like this before it got to its weight limit, but I'm thinking four will look about right. Now for the gondola, you'll only ever see it from the top, so I only have to put one layer in. And the inside of that is just over seven inches. So I need just over 41 inches of tie castings to build these two loads. I've already created enough castings for this project, so let's just get stuck right in. Well, here is the concrete tie mold. It produces a strip of, I think it's 21 in there, and three individual ties. There are small joiners between them for them to stay together without being too obvious. And obviously the first step is to produce a load of castings. Unfortunately, the first video I made this morning wasn't usable. So here are the leftover pieces after I've already finished the loads. I painted them with this Rust-Oleum Perfect Grey. It's a very light grey. It looks like a reasonable colour for new concrete. So now let's get back to the regular video. So while those are drying, I've been working on the base. Because for the gondola, I'm not going to fill the whole car with them. You'll only be able to see it from the top. So start with a, a balsa wood plank. I'm using balsa wood on this load simply because I used basswood on the last one and it really doesn't make any difference. As with all my loads I have inserted a piece of steel nail so I can pick it up with a magnet afterwards. But unlike the scrap load here the ties have to fit flat so I started by gouging out a slot to glue the nail in and so that it's not visible between the ties I'm going to put some masking tape over it. I could just glue paper on it, but I'm going to use masking tape instead. And now I'm going to paint this the same colour. now is wait for it to dry and I will come back later. 
Well, I've allowed the paint to dry, so I have my base, I have my pile of ties, and I have some strip wood. This is HO scale 4x6. I was going to use 4x4, but I didn't have any. For the gondola load, it's just a case of putting two strips the length of the car and then gluing these on top. If we look closely, there are gaps between the ties, so you will be able to see the wood showing through, which is why I'm going to put it in anyway, just so they've got the right colour. Now I deliberately made this a nice loose fit, so the wood strips are going to be slightly longer. Now in reality this would be composed of several shorter pieces of wood, but you'll never know the difference just by looking at it, so I'm just going to put them on in full length. Now I could wait for that to go hard, but I'm just going to start assembling it. So some of these are less than perfect. I was using up some old expired resin and I got some air bubbles. So this one, for example, this will be fine for one of the lower levels on the flat car load. But on both of those, obviously the top layer needs to be the best ones. So let me get my super glue. This is the same glue that I use for attaching the wood ties to my fast track turnouts. And you didn't just see me drop it in the wood glue there, did you? avoiding putting the short piece on the end because it's the one that's most likely to get banged and potentially broken off. Right, I've got to leave that to set up a bit and then figure out how high it needs to go in the gondola. So let's set that aside and work on the one to the bulkhead flat. Now this load is a little bit more involved I'm going to start with two pieces of wood the right length. I'll have plenty of opportunity to use up the short pieces on the other rows. I think what I'm going to do for this one is to build it up on a sheet of scrap paper. So what I have to do now is get two pieces of this with strip wood tacked to the paper the right distance apart. Put the line on there to ensure that it's straight. Now what I'm going to do is make sure I hold back enough of the good ties to do the, the top row. Right, those are good. So I will keep those. Well, unfortunately, my batteries ran out in the camera, and I've got two rows done now. It's just a case of building it up one piece at a time. What I'm doing, using up all the offcuts, I'm trying to make sure that I use the wood to splice the gaps in the resin castings and vice versa. And 
and even with just two rows the load is already pretty rigid. there it is finished. In retrospect maybe a fifth layer of ties would have looked better but I didn't make enough castings for that so it's stuck with four now. Now to finish off the gondola load my stickers stick out a little bit too far at the end so let's cut those off And that's too low. So let me just dive back into my balsa wood. Yes. And there is the gondola load finished as well. Well that's all for this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it or found it useful. If you're interested in duplicating these loads, as I mentioned before, I have made the molds available through my web store, superiormodelrailroads.com. And by far the longest part of this project was stockpiling all the castings, because I had to wait for resin to dry at least a dozen times to do these pair of loads. And I'm thinking if you wanted to make a lot of loads, it's one of those rare cases where you should probably have multiple molds on the go at a time. It would certainly speed up the project somewhat. So anyway, I'm just going to say goodbye. Hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.